If you have a family or you have a team, this will blow your mind. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Well, let's talk about social dynamics. So this came up because I was working with a client and they were talking about their daughter. Now, these are business owners and they were saying, you know, my daughter's just so lazy. She doesn't do anything and she's just down all the time. And, you know, she's at that age. She's at that age where just everything's too hard and, you know, everything's just... Anyway, so I said, all right, cool. Let's let's set up a session. Let's have a chat. So we started talking and she said, you know, Michael, it just pisses me off because both the husband and wife are business owners. So they're both very driven. And then they've also got uh, another family member, uh, a son, and the son is very driven as well. And he's very driven in the area of sport. And so the daughter was seen to be as lazy. And so what I did was I showed that everything balances itself back out in a social dynamic. Now, this is something that very rarely gets taught and very rarely do people have the intelligence to stand back and look at something and ask the right question questions. And so this is why it gets overviewed so much. But what I can what what I will say is that if you go and type in and you go to Google and you look up net charge of polarity in the universe, it says zero, which means that there is zero charge in the universe. There's no negatives and there's no positives. Now we know that there's negatives and we know that there's positives. There has to be. What happens is it balances itself out. So when something is positive and a negative comes along, it neutralizes it and it returns it back to a zero. So what I know is that in social dynamics and in family dynamics and in business dynamics, everything has to balance itself back out to neutralize itself. And so if you look at traits in a family dynamic, they will balance themselves out. So if you have, let's say that there are three people in the family that are driven, they will be counterbalanced by the laziness of the fourth person. And so the person will be lazy relative to how driven people are. And the more driven they become, the more lazy the other person gets. Now, if you want that person to be more energized and more energetic and does more shit, then normally you need to slow down and you need to give them more responsibilities and you start to balance them out. And this happens in a business as well. If you have an overworker, you produce an underworker. Now, most people don't know this because it's never spoken about in most fields of psychology and human behavior and social sciences. It doesn't really get spoken about. Now, I don't know why, because it's such a valuable tool. In board meetings, I normally, when I'm working with someone who has to do a lot of board meetings, or when uh, when I worked with someone who did a lot of mergers and acquisitions or worked in M&A, they had to do a lot of meetings where they were doing big business deals. You know, we're talking hundreds of millions to business uh, to billions of dollars of business deals. And what I taught them was that in a board meeting, there's normally the over-talker and the under-talker, and both of them are trying to compensate for insecurities. When you know that, let the over-talker talk, but then ask the under talker questions and then shut up the over talker because then what it will do is it'll balance out that situation and it's essentially balancing itself anyway but you have the person who is over communicating and there'll be a expression but then there'll also be a repression in the person who wants to say something who doesn't because they just let the over talker talk when you know this about social dynamics and you realize that things balance themselves out it makes life a lot more fun this can also happen in an intimate relationship if you get home and you're all elated and excited and wow i've had the most amazing day normally that partner, the person's partner will be down and depressed and feel like shit or they'll have a heap of problems and they'll bring up a whole bunch of problems. Now, if you're elated and excited, you'll get pissed off with them and you'll start arguing. And when you argue, you'll be communicating and starting to neutralize each other until at the end of the argument, you sit there and you go, oh, you know what? I love you, but you're a dickhead. Okay. And they'll, they'll look around, they go, you know, what? I love you, but you're an asshole. And you give each other a cuddle and you'll be balanced. You'll be very neutral in your emotions. You won't be excited. You won't be depressed. You'll be very neutral about that situation. And this is arguments normally cause neutralizations. In fact, war does the same thing. When we have war, you've got two parties who can't communicate effectively. Um, either both parties are elated and they will fight against each other to balance each other out and to neutralize, or one party will start to be, one party feels suppressed and the other one starts to express, and then that's what creates the war. So these things are really fascinating, and it's something, uh, I, I go through a lot more of this in one of my more advanced events called Triumph, which is a leadership event. Uh, it's a leadership and influence event, because these patterns of behavior are so awesome, but most people just don't know them, and they I don't even learn how to think through them, but you can see it happening in any social dynamic. If you just stand back and ask the right questions, you'll see it happening in front of your eyes. So anyway, what happened was when I was working with this client, I said, okay, well, let's go to a different moment. Let's go to moment by moment. The reason why when I'm working with people to break down human behavior patterns, 
they're moments in time. What most people don't realize is that the brain takes snapshots second by second, millions. I mean, I don't even know how fast the brain operates, probably at the speed of light. Now, if we say that it's at the speed of light, um, which is almost instantaneous, it's not exactly instantaneous, but it's fucking quick, right? Faster than, well, I was going to say faster than what we think, but it's probably that's the speed of which we think at maybe potentially. So let's just say that information travels at the speed of light. When we're talking about these splits happening, they're happening essentially at the speed of light. And so what most people don't realize is the brain is taking essentially snapshots, super quick. Remember those old films that, that go because essentially they were photographs second or moment by moment that were then put together on a, on a reel and that reel then created a movie and it still happens like there's, you know, in movies there's frame by frame by frame by frame and those frames then put together a movie and we don't even realize because the frames are so fast these days that we, and there's so many frames that we don't even realize it just looks like one complete rev revolution of a movie and that it just keeps moving. There's no pauses. But essentially, they're, they're photos that get taken second by second snapshot. Our brain does exactly the same thing. And moment by moment, our brain takes a snapshot of the situation, assesses it, snapshot of the situation assesses it. Then the way that it puts everything together is it generalizes things. So we tend to create these neural associations from past experience. We attach meaning to it, we create stories, and we input all this other information. There are a lot of studies out there in the field of psychology that are showing that around about 50% of everything that a person says in their story is made up. And it's made up of assumptions, it's made up of generalizations, it's made up of just inputting data that might not even be there. And this is why people have arguments about different situations. You can be in you can have the same situation with 10 different people and they'll all see something completely different because it's not that the information is different. It's just that the way that they're, what the information is that they're picking up based on their past experience, how they're generalizing everything and how they're piecing together that information to create a story or a meaning, you know, there, there's a lot of made up information in there. So when I'm working with someone, I say to them, go to a moment in time where this happened because then you're essentially getting a snapshot which has the data, not the whole generalization. So when someone starts telling me their story, I know that they're in the story, not the snapshot. And you'll see me do this live at events. If you've ever been to Thrive Time before where I've done a breakthrough with someone, you'll see me stop them and say, no, go to a moment, be specific. I need that exact moment. Because right there you see the imbalances that are happening inside their own brain. And it's just, it's really, really cool. And I, I think maybe this is why I get, um, you know, some, some decent results because I just, I learned this years ago that the brain doesn't, the generalizations are a bunch of snapshots and they're moment by moment snapshots. And our brain works exactly like a video camera and especially like the old video cameras where it takes moment by moment snapshots and then piece them all together to create a story. So anyway, I said to her, can you go to a moment where your daughter wasn't being lazy? And she went to a moment and she said, yes, she was cleaning up the house. And I said, okay, in that moment, who was the lazy one? And she said, actually, it was my son. He was sitting on the couch and he wasn't doing anything. And I went, okay, so can you see in that moment that she was being productive and your son was being lazy? And she said, yes, I can. Then I said, go to another moment where she wasn't being lazy. And she went to another moment and she said, in this moment, I can see that she was doing creative art or something. And can I? And I said, can you see that in that moment she was being productive, but the productivity was in her values because creativity is important to her. And so she's being productive in her values. And she said, oh, yes. Then I said, go to another moment. And she said, there was another moment where recently I noticed that she was on the phone, but she was talking to her friends. And I said, okay, how was she being productive? And she said, because her friends are a very high value of hers. And I said, so can you see that when she's on the phone talking to her friends and you think that she's not being productive, she's actually being productive, productive in her values. Then I said, who was the lazy one? And she said, actually, it was me because I was procrastinating knowing that I needed to do something and I wasn't doing it. So I was the one who was lazy. And so we ended up going through and we neutralized all of these perceptions in her brain that she had, which had created a generalization, which is my daughter is lazy. Now her daughter's not lazy. She has moments of being lazy, but she also has other moments of living her values where from someone else's point of view who has a high value on business and a high value on career and a high value of learning, that looks like they're being lazy. Like when you see your daughter on the phone and she's just sitting there chit chatting, that seems like it's unproductive and lazy, but that's only because the mother was reflecting or, or pressing her values onto the daughter, expecting her value to be driven financially, to work hard, to get shit done, to, you know, to look after her health, to do... Whereas that's not her daughter's values. Her daughter's values are connection, creativity. She learns, but she learns about human behavior, connecting with people. She loves going out to nature and things like that. So it's just, there's there were two conflicts going on. There was the values conflict of not seeing and appreciating somebody else's values, but then also creating a huge generalization. And these things here are, uh, again, confirmation biases, is that the more that she kept saying, my daughter's lazy, she would see her daughter being lazy, which would reconfirm her belief 
belief about her daughter being lazy. When I showed her that there were so many times where her daughter wasn't lazy that she didn't even pick up in her own perception, she went, oh fuck, she's like just as driven as all of us. And I just sent a message through to say, how's everything going? How's your relationship with your daughter? And she goes, it's been amazing. We're actually getting along. She actually sent me a message today thanking me for all the hard work that I do and for being a great mom. So my point that I'm trying to make is that in social dynamics, this is very rarely spoken about. And that is that everything has to neutralize itself. If you're extremely driven, there will be people around you who will be lazy because you're taking on all the work. And this is really important in a business. You have to learn how to delegate and you have to learn how to switch off and let other people pick up the weight. If not, it creates resentment as a byproduct. You get frustrated, you get stressed out and you become grumpy and snappy towards people. Also as well that if you're elated and excited, someone else will have to bring you back down and that can create an argument. It create, can create stress and pressure in an intimate relationship. You can also have someone in your business as well. And I was talking to someone about this uh, who's a business owner yesterday and they were saying that, you know, they wanted to implement all this stuff and, and um, you know, they, they wanted to get shit done. But they had someone in their business who was like the negative person who always brought up, well, what about this? But what about this? What about this? And what I spoke to him about, I said, do you realize though that what's happening is you're only seeing the upside and he's bringing up all the downsides because you're not thinking through things effectively. If you think through things effectively, watch happens, he'll neutralize and he'll go, okay, cool. I understand you get it. And the conversations will be a lot different. I would love to hear from you. So look, I'm going to give everyone who's listening to this podcast a bit of a challenge and I would love to see who's up for the challenge, but I want to give you a challenge to see if you can spot these imbalances in the next week, just in your family, in your business, or just around you. Notice when you're excited, if someone else is down and flat and depressed, or if when you're thinking about moving fast in your business, whether someone else you feel is holding you back or someone legitimately is trying to hold you back, or, you know, when you're, uh, let's just say when you're excited about something, you've got a partner who brings up all the negatives and the downsides. When you want to grow and you want to grow fast, someone else is reminding you of all the things that you haven't done and all the problems and all that sort of stuff. Just see if they're there. And then what I would love you to do is shoot me a message on any of my social media pages. So you can go to Facebook, Instagram, please jump across. Uh, you can on LinkedIn as well. Uh, my thread is Michael Mojo double zero on Instagram. If you just type in Michael Mojo, it will come up. The exact thread isn't Michael Mojo double zero because some other fucker uh, hacked my account. Um, so I couldn't get that account back, but um, it's, it's Michael Mojo double zero. And I've just swapped these zeros and the O's around. Um, so you see my account there. If you just type it in, it'll come up. And if you shoot me a message and I try to sell you Bitcoin or, or anything else, you've got the wrong account. There's a few fake accounts going around. So if I try to sell you Bitcoin or try to sell you shares or crypto or anything like that, yeah, please uh, report that account because it's definitely not my account. Um, so yeah, but I would love to hear from you. So please shoot me a message. Let me know if you're enjoying these podcasts and let me know if you're up for the challenge. And also I would love to see if you start to pick up on this stuff. It will change the way you operate around people. And also they give you feedback about your imbalances as well. Makes a massive difference. Anyway, some of you are probably thinking this guy's a fucking lunatic. But anyway, I hope that it helps Driven Mofos. Please remember, if you haven't jumped across to our Facebook group as well, um, the No BS Business Hacks for Driven Mofos, uh, you can just go to Facebook, type in the search bar, Driven Mofo Business Hacks, and you'll see our group come up. You can join that group as well. I'm dropping content in there every day. It's stuff to help you in sales, marketing, branding, uh, leadership, a whole bunch of stuff. I just keep adding more and more content in there every day. Um, there's stuff that you can watch. There's there's downloads. There's a whole bunch of things. So um, please jump across there as well and join that group. Anyway, Driven Mofos, never underestimate the dream. Peace out.